what is going on you guys it's your boy white album here welcome back to some more suki he made a piece of blue glass moon last time we left off we finally get into some action baby we had a mysterious vampire show up to the hotel that arcoid and shiki were residing in and uh shiki was attacked by two dogs two very undead dogs <laughs> i guess like you could say and uh, he fucked them up there's no way of putting that he fucked them up but uh you know let's keep going man let's keep going let's see if we can find out who this vampire is man let's let's do it let's do it let's keep going let's keep going shall we Ooh. all right give me oh here we go here we go yeah, the homeboy went off the boy shiki went off hold on about that wiping my nose over here all right here we go mm, actually before i do take a quick sip of my g fuel mm. Mm. tasty all right let's do this let's do this baby let's get into some more action here i look down on that which was once filled with life the limp body no longer pro uh, protests as I finally remove my arm from its maw. Hell? You hardly even bit me. I take a long look at my bloodied arm. My school uniform has been torn to shreds, but the gouges in my flesh aren't even a centimeter deep. So that was just all in his head. <laughs> The deluge of blood dripping down my arm earlier must have belonged to the dog. It doesn't even hurt that badly anymore. My fear must have clouded my mind and amplified the pain in the heat of the moment. I'm still lying down on the floor, staring at the ceiling. My head hurts so much. My world is a patchwork stitched together by these lines of death. Though my limbs are freezing cold, my mind is spinning with a fever. He's like, fuck, I should've just gone to school today. <laughs> the corpses of the two dogs are right beside me. One of my arms is covered in blood, while the other still cl uh, clutches the reddened knife. Beneath this floor are the mangled and charred corpses of the victims that died in the pandemonium. There's nothing I can do but laugh. Because this isn't real. It can't possibly be real. I'm normal. Totally normal. The only weird thing here is this dream, and the second I wake up, it'll all go away. But when did I start dreaming with my eyes open? Oh, here we go. The elevator chimes again. Such a cute, clear noise, and entirely, or entirely inappropriate for the current situation. The elevator? It's the elevator adjacent to the one that brought the dogs. My exhausted brain doesn't even try to contemplate what this means. The door opens. My mind might not be working, but my body will have to. In a dull haze, I grip the knife in my right hand and haul myself up to face the oncoming tragedy. I don't want to do this. I really gaze inside of the newly arrived elevator. Inside it is... Kara? Nothing? It's completely empty. A bit of an anticlimax in its own way. The danger has passed. Everything's over, and I've already gotten the grasp of the situation on the lower floors. Which means there's no reason for me to stick around here. I turn to leave when... <laughs> Someone, anyone, please, anybody. I hear a woman's voice. She sounds so desperate. It's almost, it almost seems out of touch with this, uh, with reality. Her pleading screams grow in volume, accompanied by panic footfalls. There's no mistaking it. It must be Survivor. Out of breath as she frantically works her way up the stairwell next to the elevators. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh, thank God. This place isn't on fire yet. Yet. <laughs> she sounds relieved. Not for long. She's going to get absolutely turned into charcoal. I'm assuming that's definitely going to happen. That's definitely what's about to happen here. Okay. So, but she doesn't slow her pace. Within moments, I can see her spilling from the stairwell and into the hallway. You! Hey, you! She starts running again as she takes note of me. Uh. Thank God! There's someone else here! I'm saved! Her expression, overcast and pale with fear, is lit up by a flash of joy as her eyes focus on me. Huh? Oh. A white gloved hand seizes her, gripping her from salvation and back into hell. No. No, please. No. No, no! Still watching me, the woman begs for help. And then, she falls silent. No resistance, no constraints that bind her. The second she's grabbed, she loses consciousness, as if this were a dream and she were and she was snapped awake, leaving only her body behind. Stop. Stop this at once. That woman. Damn, he's deep in the fucking neck. That's crazy. She has nothing to do with this. She's just a sweet and innocent girl. Not anymore, she's dead. Praying on her is... Stop! My cries come too late. Not that they would have changed anything. My eyes are fixated on the woman's neck. Starry orbs of light flicker and scatter within my vision. Rage, like never before, boils in my chest. My vision clears, and I see two soulless pits amid a deluge of blood. The woman's legs twitch ever so slightly, her fingers jolting reflexively. All emotion, all life, drains from her face. That's to be the first time I've seen it happen, but I don't need to be familiar with the sight, of, the sight to comprehend the horrific spectacle in front of me. The drinking and gulping of the monster is almost unnaturally loud against the otherwise silent hallway. When it had its fill, the monster dic dic uh, what? discards her body without a second thought. Her body wavers, frail like a withered tree. A ballerina, a ballerina tiptoeing the fine line between life and death. I gaze at her pitiful form. Pitiful, you know. The woman is totally silent. The only sound is that of rushing blood. Then her back splits open. Damn, okay. In a single moment, a fountain of blood erupts. The vampire sighs in relief as he bathes in the scarlet shower. You fucked up now, Blob. You fucked up now, big dog. You fucked up now. In an instant, everything around me changes. The sweltering temperature finally seems to match up with reality. A dam of fire burst, flowing out all at once. The hallway is absolutely enveloped by flames. He looks so cool. I hate fighting him in Melty Blood, but he's so cool. <laughs> the heat presses against me, singeing and stinging at my skin like claws. If I were to take a breath now, I'd surely burn my lungs. But something is strange here. The flames continue licking at their surroundings, and yet, the building isn't on fire and the only thing still alive here uh, as the only oh, oh sorry as the only thing still alive here i'm the only one left to feel this inferno my headache intensifies the man begins walking my way it's clear he is the source of this river of flames the closer he gets the more terrible the heat becomes he's still 15 meters away from me but even at this distance, it's impossible for me to breathe. 
I realize that nothing could survive in this man's vicinity. The proximity alone would lead to certain incineration. The shadow continues onwards in my direction. He's a lean, oh, he's lean and tall, wearing antiquated clothes topped by a, her, a heavy fur coat. Though his figure may be human-like, everything about him screams that he's anything but. There's something off about him, something wild and crazed. Only 13 meters now. He continues without a sound. I glare at the man, knife firmly in hand. He doesn't respond. I'm starting to wonder if he could even see me. Oh, uh, what? I'm starting to wonder if he can even see me. 10 meters. I train my eyes on his body. Amid the rising flames, I can finally see the lines of death that cover him. Oh, little light source in his chest. My brain feels like soup boiling over an open flame. What is that? A dense and intricate torrent of death swirls at the center of it all. And at the center of the torrent is an odd glimmer, bright and shiny like a precious jewel. My head hurts too much to keep staring at it. It's like how staring straight into the sun will burn your retinas. There's no way I can directly stare at his core for too long. Throw your knife, man. Just fucking... <laughs> Fucking like uh, you know, like in the end of Modern Warfare 2, OG Modern Warfare 2, when Soapy rips out the fucking throwing knife, it just tosses in and hits Shepard right in the eyeball. That would be that. Oh, that was peak, man. Too bad the new Call of Duty games are not like that. Oh, unfortunately, campaign-wise, multiplayer-wise, they can go fuck themselves. But campaign-wise, I think Cold War was like the best in my opinion. Modern Warfare 2019 was a bad. Vanguard was okay. I, uh, Modern Warfare 2022. Did I beat that campaign? No, I didn't. And then I never played Modern Warfare 3. Back on track here. Let me let me get on my COD boy days. <laughs> if I don't steal myself, my brain itself might rupture at the side of it. Eight meters. He draws ever closer. Uh, meanwhile, Arkaway just sitting there in her fucking room, just, just like, eh, you know. <laughs> the temperature rises. Though not enough to cook through human flesh yet. Six meters. The man stops. His focus falls on me. It took him this long to notice me standing there. I meet his gaze. Yeah, my man needs a little bit of a... He needs some chapstick, bro. His, lip, his lips look hella fucking chap, dog. <laughs> his, his shit looks hella dry. He needs some chapstick, man. I shouldn't make eye contact. Arkowitz's words of warning ring clearly in my ears. But I can't tear my eyes away. They're beautiful. <laughs> I can't ignore the abyss before me. He's different. His eyes can't be the mystic eyes Arkowitz was talking about. These are entirely, fundamentally different. They aren't eyes that bind the viewer. They're just filled with madness. The eyes of one who's lost his mind. A madman. A poor, hapless man driven crazy by his own impulses. A man just like me. My instincts scream at me to get out of danger. Every alarm in my body tells me this is bad news. What if he's just going for a handshake? You don't know. <laughs> but my body won't move. Not even as much as a single fingertip. Danger signals, danger signals fire through my synapses. Synapses. No matter the cost, I have to get away from him. If I don't, it'll be the end. Of, it'll, it'll be the end for me. But I'm too late. The creature with sickly eyes stares at me, but barely prays any. But barely pays me any notice. Praise. From its outstretched hand unfolds a fire that'll burn me alive. I'm going to die. This fire is as real as it is terrifying. Different from the blue flames that flooded the hall, they were sort of sort of a byproduct, an effect to his cause. They could swallow you alive, but you wouldn't die immediately. They scorch you with some awful phantom pain that feeds off life itself. But these flames are different. Just getting close is enough to char the skin, enough to burn all organic matter to ashes. The fire engulfs me from all sides like a clawing seizing its prey. Which is cool because in Melty Blood, um... Hold on just one second.
Sorry about that. Had something to do there. Something a little bit important in IRL. But uh, here we go. As I was going to say, actually, um, uh, it's pretty cool because in Melty Blood, when he uses, when he's in his fire stance, uh, the the fire that he, his fire projectiles are in, like, in the shape of claws. It's pretty cool. Um, it'll cleave my body in two, neatly cauterizing the flesh where it, where it is ripped apart. The only thing more real than this fire is my fate. Yet just before I die, my body is flung backwards with a snap. Ark? Arkawade? The name creeps from my throat. My mind goes blank. I have a rough understanding of what just transpired. Arkwade pulled me back before stepping in front of me to absorb the blow from that sinister fiery hand. What I don't understand is why she did it. Wasn't it supposed to be her shield? So why is she getting hurt to protect me instead? Arkwade's face scrunches up in pain. The man hits her with a flaming claw again and again. But this time, she doesn't have to pull me out of the fire's way. Arkwade swings her right hand like she did in the alley, batting the flames away. But she's unable to extinguish the flames entirely, and the lingering embers strike her head on. Does that mean even Arkwade could be burned if she took the full brunt of these flames? Well, it is nighttime, so. <laughs> well, actually, never mind. <laughs> well, no, she's still weak, so yeah. Are they hot enough to kill even her? This woman with barely any lines on her, who's supposed to be so far removed from death. The entire clash lasts in five seconds. The two exchange a dozen blows each way. I don't understand why, but when they're done, the man solemnly lowers his arm. He stares at Arkwade intently, not even or not saying a single word. Arkaway glares back bitterly as she clutches her red abdomen. This man has eyes for nothing but Arkaway. I mean, who doesn't, right? <laughs> he doesn't even care that I'm here, safe behind Arkaway's protective figure, clutching a knife. Vapor slipped from the man's lips. His breath is heavy, like he's being pushed through an exhaust pipe, as he reached with his left hand to find something beneath his coat. I hear a faint, metallic clink. It's gotta be some kind of blade. He's hiding a long object beneath his coat. The same object he used to rend through the back of that woman and turn her into a fountain of blood. He takes one step closer to Arkawade. His weapon is still carefully concealed beneath his coat. <laughs> Insolent boar. Only a swine would fail to speak their name before battle. Or did your sire neglect to teach you the most basic level of decorum? The man stops in his tracks. A slight flick the flicker beneath his hollow eyes, as if he just remembered uh, as what? As if only just remembering himself. I don't even know what the language Arkway had used. But the man clears his throat, composing himself. Isn't he Russian? I'm pretty sure he's from Russia. But that wouldn't make sense for Ark. I mean, technically, I mean, she's been alive for 800 years, so she's probably learned a couple of languages, right? His voice carries a current pain, like he had forgotten he were a living being until just now. I know the proper decorum. I merely possess no name to share with you. God, can I just say I love this man's voice, dude. If you don't know Kenjiro Suda is his voice actor, and he is legit my like favorite voice actor in Japan. Dog, he is amazing. I just I've said this in one of my earlier videos. I love this man's voice, dog. This man's voice is perfection. I'm just going to say that right now. It's per I love this man's voice, dude. He could just play that like calm cool stoic collected characters so well it's, it's just amazing man again he voiced uh tiziano from uh from jojo part five. Oh, he i think if i remember he also voiced what's his name minami 
from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. If you don't know, he's that like tall blonde haired dude with the glasses on. I think that's his name, Minami. No, not Nanami? Minami? One of the two. One of those two. He voices him as well. And oh, dog, I again I love this man's voice. <laughs> I, I will say that every time I hear, I'll love this man's voice, but let's keep going. He may be lacking in etiquette, but at least you still know shame. Also like the uh is that the word juxtaposition? If you look at Arcaway's eyes, like the way they're designed, they're very full of life. But if you look at uh Vlov's eyes, they're very dull. They don't have like the same shimmer of light that Arcoid has, and I like that. So if you lost your original name. Surely there's some way to address you though. You may have just only inherited the title, but you're still an ancestor. The atmosphere in the hall shifts. The azure flames well up all around the corridor, burning ever brighter. It looks like Arcway hit a sore spot. Vlov. Vlov. A pained expression paints his face. Vlov Archangel. Is it Angel? He declares his name. I can't say I've heard of you. Since I got no record of you, I can't. Uh, I doubt you were a legitimate successor. Did your sire dis uh, destroy themselves? Or. So no. It was I who dispatched my liege. So if you only just become an ancestor. Have you come to make a name for yourself by killing me next? Prestige and glory are found within the heart. I take only that which I desire. I admire your courage, but you should focus on me alone. You're kind of overdoing it here. No. This city is tainted. He's like, the city fucking sucks. Like, I was here for like two months. I hate it. I fucking hate it. I want to go back home. <laughs> if I am to follow my creed, I must cleanse this place in flame. Really? So you're just a third rate uh, dead apostle with no, uh, no better than a barbarian. I am aware of my own crudeness. Princess of the true ancestors, surrender your heart to me. The area around Vlav twists with a shimmering heat or simmering. Like a river bursting through its banks, the fire rushes in our direction. Arcway stands in front of me, like a breakwater, holding back the flood from swallowing me whole. Don't move, Shiki. These flames are his weapon. If you want to be more than a pile of ashes by the time this is over, you better stay well behind me. I appreciate her warning, but something about her words struck me as odd. This is his weapon? Is she really sure about that? I mean, after creating these high temperatures, he's still... No. This isn't the time to think about that. Focusing, I tightly grip the knife in my hand. He's coming. The hallway is now a cavern of flame. Vlav pulls the blade from his coat. Oh. 
huh? He's like, I, I got better things to do. <laughs> For some strange reason, Vlav suddenly turns his back towards us. He strides down the hall and leisure, leisurely enters the elevator, leaving us behind as if nothing had happened. What the? Okay. Now I officially don't understand a goddamn thing. I don't understand those dogs. I don't understand the flames that cover the hallway. And I don't, and I don't understand the waking nightmare that attacked the hotel. She. Key. Arkway slumps against me with a thud. She's got a nasty wound, unless she managed to stop the bleeding, but her face is contorted in pain. It's still fresh. After all, she only just received the wound while she was uh, shielding me from certain death. I'm here. Why did you. I may have underestimated him a little. I thought I could jump in to save you and still make like oh. and still make like work of him afterwards. But maybe I underestimated you too. That wound you gave me is no joke. Well, I think it was more of a wound, but sure. With her face still scrunched up in pain, Arkway smiles as if she were amused by her own words. I can't bear to look at her. Not only did she suffer this wound while protecting me, I'm the reason she's this weak in the first place. So why is she still smiling at me so stupidly? How am I, how am I even supposed to respond? Arkway leads against me, putting her weight on my shoulder and she, as she closes her, uh, closes her eyes. Yeah, hold on. Don't close your eyes, you dumbass. Pull yourself together. Aren't you some kind of super vampire who can't die at night? Well, yeah. But it seems I might have hit my limit. But what? Sorry. But can you help me get back to my apartment? Arkoid collapses against me. I managed to catch her just in time, arms wrapped tight around her slender body. Hold on, just one second. If you die on me here, I really have no idea how to respond. Damn it, wake up, Arkoid! I shout at her, shivering. Her eyes remain closed. When? Her soft snoring sounds so content. I started feeling like an idiot for being worried about her after all. Yeah, my concern was wasted on her. She's not dying, she just fell asleep. <sighs> sure, whatever. I'll drag you back all the way home. Keep tossing around those selfish commands, why don't you? It's not like there's any other option, though. We can't exactly stay at the hotel when it's like this. Things will get difficult if we stick around the scene of a massacre. Despite everything being limited to just the hotel, as morning comes and people arrive, it's quickly it'll quickly be clear what happened. <laughs> My head still hurts. Arcway isn't the only one who's at our limit. I put my glasses back on at least to alleviate my headache. Arcoid's apartment. Right, I remember where it is now. Even though I've only just visited it once, I still vividly recall its location. Well, no point in loitering around here any longer. I gather up our things from the royal suite. Pull Arkwood into my arms and leave the barren hotel with a feeling of shame pressing down on my shoulders. And on the other hit, he's like on the top floor too, so like, you go down, you're just like, what the fuck? You just see the whole massacre that happened in this poor fucking, uh, hotel. It's already light outside. So that, so that's what it was. That explains why the man left so suddenly. The sun illuminates the city with a gentle light. Night has given way to day. 
For now, I suggest focus on getting Arkway the rest she needs. Taking a taxi is out of question. We stand out. If a pair, if a pair this suspicious got into your car, you definitely remember their faces. Instead, I carry Arkwaite as far as the, from the hotel as it can before boarding a bus from Suya Station, or for Suya Station. We're lucky. Given the early hour, there are no witnesses or curious onlookers to point their gaze at us. Using the manager of that place, maybe say like a day off or something like that. He fucking, he walks into the hotel and like, what the fuck happened here? What happened to everybody? <laughs> My staff is dead. The, the fucking, the residents are dead. Everybody's fucking dead. What the worst, what, what, this burn marks? What's that? He's like, he's, he's like looking at the fucking, uh, the security feed. He's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> The exit around the back is exactly as I left it two days ago. It's open. Oh, okay. Neither the residents nor the building's caretakers must have noticed the lock was broken. It's 6.30 in the morning now. I sneak into the self-proclaimed vampire's room just as I did last time. Finally, the long mess of a day can be laid to rest. I think we're missing one key feature or key problem here <laughs> hey there we go fire and blood finish chapter four damn we finished chapter four already ladies and gents damn already that deep uh and her name is akia that's the i think that's the biggest problem here <laughs> yes i would like to save my progress you know this wouldn't have happened if you would have just stayed with the arena's dog <laughs> if you would have stayed with them you could have been Fine, big dude. All right, day five, fire and blood, part two. Arkway's room doesn't exactly scream vampire. I wasn't in the right set of mind last time, so I didn't get a good look. But it's just a normal apartment. There isn't a bottle of blood in sight. No mysterious sculptures or antiques either. She's even got a fridge and tableware. What does she need those for? She's, she's thirsty? <laughs> she's got water in there? I don't know. I muttered to myself as I laid her down on the bed sheets. Arcoid might be light, but that doesn't make any less exhausting to have carried her all the way here. <sighs> I plant myself right there on the floor and, and catch my breath. It's just about 7 o'clock. Right. I better close the curtains. I force one last ounce of, of strength into my tired bones and shut the curtains. And with that, my body finally releases the tension it had been holding on to all this time. As I try to sit back down, my knees give out and send me crashing down onto the floor. <sighs> How pathetic am I? Getting this tired from lugging a girl around. Ever since my accident, my body's been slow to heal from injuries. Though, that was never a cause, uh, cause for me to shy away from working out. The arenas had a dojo, so I'd made sure to exercise as much as I could. Even a common cold could be dangerous if you don't take care of yourself. But since I've kept active, I'd say I'm about as fit as anyone. It's just my stamina that's awful. Like an athlete geared for a single sport, I'm a sprinter that isn't going to be winning any marathons. I'm pretty sure you're a sprinter that's not going to be winning any sprints either. <laughs> now that I'm lying on the ground, there's no way I'm getting up again. I spent the entire night talking to Arkway, and it's been a full day since I've had anything decent to eat. It's kind of amazing that I managed to hold out this long, frankly. <laughs> Arkoid. I wonder if he's going to be okay. 
I steal a glance at the girl in the bed. Her abdomen seems to have stopped bleeding, and if she comes back to life after being dismembered, I'm not really sure I needed to be worried in the first place. Ugh, what's wrong with me? My head throbs like, I've ha like I have a fever. I'm so tired. I can barely breathe. Yet, here I am. More worried about her than about myself. Maybe I really am coming down with something. Down with the sickness? It's going to be another day where he skips school. <laughs> this is not going to look good on your permanent record, big dog. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a radio. Okay. The collision is believed to have been caused by a malfunction. It's suspected that the motorcycle is, that the motorcycle's brake pedal stopped working, just as the rider was coursing down a steep hill. Two people have been reported injured, though fortunately, there were no no uh, no fatalities. Yeah, wrong game. <laughs> I must have fallen asleep. Guess I was hard enough to pass out right there on the floor. It looks like someone opened up the curtains and covered me in a blanket while I was still snoozing. I'd wager it's past noon now. The TV is switched on and playing the same old news in the background. I look to the bed, but I don't see Arcoid. Where did she go? I prop myself up to get a better look around. There's a hint of movement coming from the kitchen in the next room. What does she think what does she think she's doing? Moving around after sustaining an injury like that. I shrug off the blanket as I lurch to my feet. I'd better head to the kitchen and check on her or on her wounds. For our next story. A fire broke out at the Kuramibashi Dome, uh, Dome Hotel in the early hours of the morning. As no alarms were set off, the blaze remained unnoticed until approximately 6 a.m., when returning hotel staff learned of the situation and alerted the police. The police are currently working in tandem with the fire department to extinguish the remaining flames. Damn, you better be lucky you had that day off, dude. <laughs> You better be lucky. You're like, oh, that was great. You know, the thing, you know, I used PTO, got to do a couple things around the house, did some, did some personal things, got some stuff finished. And the next day you go to work and it's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, well, thank God I took that PTO, huh? <laughs> I freeze in place. My gaze is drawn back to the newscast. Authorities are 200 guests staying at the hotel remain unaccounted for. Damn, 200 people fucking died that night? That's insane. Authorities are working to put out the flames as soon as possible, but they have yet to find any survivors. Well, there's two. The news anchor continuing droning out about the details in a detached voice. A list of 200 names scrolled across a photo of the hotel we stayed at last night. Neither Arcoids, neither Arcoids nor my name is listed. Wait, don't don't they have like a they have like a like the a database of where they have all the guest names, or do they have like a physical like book that they had that shit that's burned out in flames? Police indicate this might have not been an ordinary fire. Damage to some of the interior walls of the hotel suggests a structural fault may have caused an explosion that... I turn off the TV. 200 guests remain unaccounted for? They have yet to find any survivors? 
If they already known what they known, why hold out on telling everyone the truth? That every last person in that hotel was engulfed by those insane flames and burned to a crisp, leaving nothing behind. I resist the urge to hurl. I can. Not here, not now. Simply feeling sick would make me feel no better than swine. After coming out of that alive, the only thing I should let out uh, that I should let myself feel is hatred. 200 people. 200 people of whom not a trace remains, who were massacred without a shred of sympathy or mercy. His face flares, uh, flares vividly in my mind. I don't know who he is. All I know is that he's a monster beneath the carnage or behind the carnage. <laughs> a man behind the slaughter. Is my heart numb from all the things I saw? Fear still courses through my veins. Anger too, coiling around like a snake. Yet my thoughts remain cool and collected. It's like my brain and my heart are working on two different frequencies. Just thinking about that fur-clad man makes me want to rage, yet my fingertips tingle with alertness, prime for action. I don't need emotions to know what I to know what I uh, what to do. I don't need fire or heat or passion. All I need to do is cleanly cut through his lines. Oh, you're awake. Arcoid pokes her head out from the kitchen. You're making one hell of a face. What's up? Arcoid talks to me casually, like nothing happened. Oh, uh, nothing. Morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> I don't often get a chance to wish someone a good morning. Her sweet smile takes me by surprise, and I swallow hard to even to even out my breathing. The cold thoughts of vengeance that clog my mind melt like snow before the sun. What am I even thinking about? Get it together, Shiki. The whole reason I got into this first place was to check on Arcoid. Arcoid, how's your wound? My wound? Yeah, all good, I think. Arcoid seems to be just fine. It looks like she's back the way she was before. If anything, she definitely looks better than I'm feeling right now, uh, feeling right about now. I'm glad, I'm, uh, I see. I'm glad to hear that. At least, at least the person in my immediate vicinity is safe. Ah. Uh, what the hell am I talking about? Arcoid even isn't, isn't even a person, at least not in the usual sense. How did I forget that? I must still feel, uh, I must, what? I must still be half asleep. Well, either way, that's great news. Other than the shit that I just heard. <laughs> I guess that wound of yours wasn't all that bad. Oh? Why all the sudden care and concern? You were calling me a monster just a few hours ago. And I still think that way, but I don't, but that won't stop me from being grateful anyway. You did more or less save my life out there, and to be fair, you did see a true monster. <laughs> huh? Did I? Arcoway's eyes are wide with surprise. Did she not even realize she rescued me? Yeah, you sure did. So, I guess I'm trying to say thanks for protecting me. If you hadn't pulled me aside, I would have been burned to a crisp. It's really, it's really fine, though. I'm kind of the reason you came face to face with Vlav in the first place. 
I don't deserve your thanks. That doesn't change what happened. You protected me with your life. I'm grateful for that. I guess I did do that, but... It still feels off somehow. You wouldn't have gone, but you wouldn't have to have gone through all that if you hadn't agreed to be my lookout. Well, you kind of forced us to. <laughs> Look, it was more of a reluctantly agreed. We didn't agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> it was more like, we we're just like, nah, I just want to go home. You're just like, motherfucker, no, you're becoming my shield. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> I'm the one that brought this danger into your life. I understand if you were angry, but instead you're grateful. How does that work? Arcoid has really uh, has gotten really caught up on this. Should I be blaming you instead? Ah, forget that. I need to take responsibility for choosing to stick around. Somebody once taught me that our actions are are. Our actions are our own. Oh, hold on. That makes me think. Because you know you can leave Arkawain, right? And you go to the park. If you go back to the hotel, would Shiki return to the hotel like burning and shit like that? Damn, now I want to see that. I want to see if, that, if that's the case. Or like he returns, everything's like kind of normal. And he's like, hey, she, okay, she's still asleep. And then that's when everything happens. Or is it like... It, it's a little bit different to where it's like, oh, fuck, the fucking building's on fire. I gotta go check on Arkaway real quick. And then he sees her fighting with Vlav. That'd be cool. I hope hopefully that's the case. I want to see that. No matter what others think, we have to decide, our, uh, decide for ourselves what we want to do and follow through. Which is why I don't side the, uh, hold the slightest grudge against her over the whole guard thing either. If there's anyone to blame for getting me into this mess, it's myself. Hmm. Now that you mention it, the only reason why I needed you as my shield was because you killed me in the first place. Which means that... I don't have to apologize for getting you involved. You got that right. I brought this on myself. Well, when you put it like that. <laughs> Your luck is pretty terrible, isn't it? If you'd gone and killed any other girl, none of this would have happened. Well, that's one way of putting that somewhat lightly. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> that's assuming I would have killed someone else at all. It's not like... It's not like I make a habit of stalking people down the street and murdering them. Arcoid was the first and only person who I've ever felt that uncontrollable urge to kill. And I have a feeling I would have... I would have just... I wouldn't just feel that for anyone else. What is it? Did you just remember something? Yeah, speaking about getting murdered, my sister. Yeah. Uh, not really. It's just... Now that I think about it, why did I want to kill you? Arkway knits her brows in disapproval. A fair reaction. You wouldn't want to hear that from your murderer. Uh, you wouldn't want to hear that your murderer doesn't even know why they killed you. Do you need a reason? I figure it just came naturally that you're just some serial killer. Come again? Come again? 
You were so skilled in practice when you attacked me. Ringing the doorbell, thrusting your hand behind the door the second I opened it, forcing your way in. You took advantage of my surprise to deliver the first blow, ceasing my vital functions. Then you slice me up into more than a dozen pieces. Honestly speaking, your surprise attack was perfect. So perfect, if you could have captured that scene on canvas, It'd undoubtedly be a masterpiece. A little morbid to think about, but sure. The kind I want to bring back with me and hang around the castle. It was that magnificent. Again, a little bit morbid to think about, but sure. Arkwade excitedly rattles off a litany of bizarre praise. But there's just one issue. I... But you picked the wrong gal to kill this time around. I don't know how many people you killed so far, but Karma finally came to bite you to bite you when you picked me as your prey. You're being so weird this morning. If you, got, if you got something to say, then out with it. It's not like there's any reason for us to be coy around each other, right? How right she is. I nod and beckon her to come closer. What is it? Are we sharing secrets? Arkwood closes the gap between us quickly, eyes sparkling with anticipation. I bring my lips to her ears, or to her ear, and decide to say my piece. You're fucking insane. <laughs> you see, Arkoid. Yeah, go on. One, two. <laughs> You're way off base, you idiot. My voice echoes through the apartment. I blasted Arkoid's eardrum with all the volume I could muster. Ow. Arkwade groans as she makes a big show of clutching her ear. Ow! You jerk! What the hell, Shiki? I'm the one who should be pissed off here. I thought you were out of your mind when you started ordering me to do all this insane stuff. But you know what? Now it all makes sense. What, what does? This entire time, you thought I was some kind of mass murderer? That's why you had no problem asking me to be your shield or guard or whatever against those monsters. Damn it. Do you realize how badly you misjudged me? Well, you didn't give her the best impression, so. <laughs> so you want a secret? I'll let you on a secret, all right. I'm not some serial killer or homicidal maniac. Y you're... You're the first person I've ever killed. My confession must have come as quite the surprise. Her sheer shock makes me finally realize how extraordinarily it was that I murdered her. Oh no, and that's where the uh what's that what's that what's that syndrome called? Where it's like the victim falls in love for their abuser. <laughs> But this shit, Stockholm, is that what is it, Stockholm Syndrome? There, boom, right there. That was the scene, <laughs> right there. The second the blush hit, it was, it's over. Oh no, <laughs> it's over. Okay, here we go.
No way. I was your first. But you seem so used to it. That's right. I may have we I may have these weird eyes, but I've done my best to live a decent life. Which is say I never ever had the urge to kill someone by cutting through their lines before. Hmm. Then why did you kill me? We never even met before. That's exactly the thing. I I don't I'm about to tell her I don't know. But I pause as I realize just how uh, just what a coward I am. Back then I When I passed you on the street I was overcome by a desire so strong, I felt like throwing up. From the second I saw her, I could only think of the, of her snow-white form. I couldn't stop the lust welling beneath my skin, nor the vulgar grin that crept across my face as I chased her down. Stop showing this, man. I don't want to keep putting up the fucking disclaimer. <laughs> so I came here. And before I realized it, I'd already, right here in this room, without any rhyme or reason, I chopped up that beautiful figure and stood in the puddle of her bloody remains. So oh. Strength evaporates from my body. I'm no longer, no longer able to stand. I drop to my knees. Of course, I don't have any right to be angry with Arkoid. Even if she's alive now, even if she were never human to begin with. The fact that remains, I, that I killed her with my own two hands. What's wrong with you? Going all silent on me again? What'd you realize? I'm fucking bad shit insane. <laughs> I I really should be apologizing to you I've been using how weird this all is to avoid doing something incredibly important I'm sorry I really am sorry Arkoid I killed you. Right here in this apartment. I should have apologized to you for the moment we first met. No wonder Arkaway thought I was just some cold-blooded killer. Without showing any guilt or remorse, I've been acting like I was the victim. Not just that. Even now, I still don't know why. I killed you. There's no changing that. For my actions. For my actions, I need to be punished. A killer like me shouldn't be allowed to roam the streets with the rest of society. What I did was beyond evil. A person who decides to take a life without reason doesn't deserve to walk free. I see. So you really don't know why you did it? I nod, still hanging my head. Which means you didn't get any enjoyment from it, I'm guessing. Well, technically, not Shiki himself got the enjoyment. Let's just say his sadistic side kind of did. There are some people out there for whom killing is as easy as breathing. But you're different from that, aren't you? 
Killing is easy as breathing. That's a Rambo reference. I guess. At least, I try to be. You're telling me sometimes you're too straight laced for your own good. Have you ever wanted to kill someone else like you, like you killed me? Ah, no, I never felt that way about anyone else. Then there's no problem, is there, silly? Like, I think you're missing the big picture here, Ark. Come on, stop looking so down, Shiki. You're not a killer. I lift my head, as if I've been forgiven. Ark away to smiling, brimming with such confidence and trust that it startles me. I killed her, but she believes in me more than I believe in myself. There's no need for you to face punishment either. It was by chance that it was me you wanted to kill, and, unfortunately for me, you happen to be the, the human best equipped to do so. But luckily for both of us, I'm a vampire, so nobody technically died. So you don't have to feel so torn up about it. And there's no need for you to worry about being cast out from society or any of that either. What judge is going to send? What? what <clears throat> sorry, damn! I got a little frog in my throat. What the hell? What judge is going to sentence you? You know, the only ones on this planet who can blame you are the victim, that'd be me, and you yourself. Maybe so, but that still won't take away from the fact that I killed you. Even if what Arkaway says is true, even if there's no proof that any crime occurred, I'm still going to carry the sin with me forever. <laughs> Obviously. It's not like I'm planning to forget you killed me anytime soon either. But you know what, Shiki? If you regret it, and you continue to always regret it, then I don't think there's any problem. That'd just be cheating my way out, though. Shiki, in the world, there are many Cheeky, there are some people in this world that will never sell their souls to the devil, no matter how terribly the world treats them. There are even some stupidly honest people out there who would apologize to a vampire. So you don't have to worry. No matter what anyone says, and even if you yourself try to deny it, you can still be part of the good side of this world. I'm at a loss for words. How can she say such kind, reassuring words to a man who murdered her? Oh, come on. Don't we have more pressing matters to think about anyway? Now that you're awake, we should be thinking about our plan of action from here on out. Uh, it's like something, uh, someone flipped a switch. One moment, Arkwade is cheerfully chatting away, and the next, she's on the ground. Arkwade! 
I rushed to her side. Oops. I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself again. Oh no, she's doing the I'm just a girl. <laughs> her breathing is labored, and beads of sweat glisten across her brow. My eyes wander to her abdomen, where the slightest trace of red has started to seep through her white sweater. How many white sweaters does she fucking own? <laughs> that wound. That's the one... What? That's the one she incurred while protecting me in the hotel. Yeah. It's where Vlob slashed me. Normally, normally I'd be fine, but my healing is a little slow after what you did to me. I tried to cover up the wound earlier, but it looks like it wasn't all that effective. Yeah, but we put some Neosporin on that bitch. Her tone is still cheery as ever, but I noticed an undercurrent of pain shuddering around the edges. How did you cover it up? Oh, with that. Okay. If she, I, I don't know what possesses me to say this, but like, what if she just, what if it's like a, she has like a little fireplace and there's just like the little, like the, the, the fucking wood spike thing. That's like, you know, that's like you used to, to, to poke the limber, limber, lumber. There you go. And it's just like blazing hot. She just puts that on her skin. I swear if that fucking happens, I don't know what possesses me to say that, but I've been like, like, I'm like, what, three for three for this so far? Oh, okay. Oof. Okay, hold on. Arcway gestures at a brown object drop haphazardly on the wooden floor. At a glance, I mistake it for a small ring cake. But closer inspection, I realize it's packing tape. <laughs> she ta she legit taped herself up. What the fuck? <laughs> Seriously? Give me a break. <laughs> what kind of idiot used this tape to cover their wounds? You should really stop calling me an idiot so often. What if I actually start believing you? Oh, just shot, uh, just shot it and show me your wound already. I reach out a hand to lift her shirt. Oh, you're being a little too aggressive there, Shiki. And... Arkwood quickly steps away from me. Dropping backwards onto the bed with a soft thud. I'll cut it out. What if your wound opens up again? I'm fine. Don't worry about it. You're the one who should cut it out. Trying to undress a woman like that is worse than any dead apostle. <laughs> to be clear, I don't see you as a human, let alone a woman. So come on, just show me your wound. I'll never let it go if you wind up dying from an injury you got while protecting me. Arkway pouts and glares at me for a moment, but ultimately rolls over the bed in my direction. Her lips still firmly shut. She gets back on her feet with childlike reluctance. She's sulking about it, but let's say she's at, at least let me take a look. Right. Let me take a look at how you wrapped it up first. Oh god. Arkaway lifts up her sweater to reveal her abdomen. That looks terrible. I, you? I had to resist the urge to go off like a triad on a triad again. The tape is tightly wrapped around not just her wound, but her entire abdomen. The second she lowers her shirt again, I pull Arkaway onto my ar up into my arms. Hey, what are you doing, Shiki? Putting you right back on the bed, that's what. I'd rather take you to the hospital, but that's out of the question, so I have to do this. 
I place her back onto the bed as gently as I can. I'm gonna pick up some stuff, so you better not move a muscle until I get back. Don't you ever walk around like that again, or else I'm gonna forget all about you and never come back. Look, last time we did that, we died. So let's let's we're, let's just let's just tough it out, Shiki. <laughs> let's just tough it out, buddy. I quickly scan the room. Not a first aid kit or even a bandage in sight. Guess you don't really need any of that when you can revive whenever you want to. And hell, this might be the first time she ever needed medical treatment. I feel around to check how much I, I have on me. 2,000 yen in cash. Not a lot. Uh, this, isn't the, this isn't the time to be putting on airs. Harakawaid, you said you were rich, right? Give me your credit card. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm pretty well off. Why do you ask? It's like, look, because I need money and I can't call my sister because she will legitimately kill me. Give me some cash or credit card. I'm going out to buy some medical supplies. I don't know if it'll actually do you any good, but it wouldn't hurt to try. Sure, but it's probably pointless, you know. Even if it is, I just can't sit here and leave you like that. Okay. My body structure is similar to that of a regular human. So, who knows? Maybe it'll do something. Arkwade holds out a wad of 10,000 yen bills in front of me. I'm not even going to ask where she pulled this stack of bills from. <laughs> stay in bed while I'm gone. Oh, but don't fall asleep. You've got to stay awake even if you're lying down. Hmm. Are you just trying to make it hard for me? I'm not randomly passing out orders here. Your body doesn't work as hard when you're asleep, which means your immune system is going to be a lot weaker too. In other words, it might get worse if you fall asleep with that open wound. Sleep is good for curing fatigue, but it's not going to fix illness or injuries. Or injuries or illness. I don't know why I mixed those two up. So it's better for you to stay awake till I come back with something to treat you. You know, for someone who's in the medical field, I should know if that's true or not. <laughs> huh. That makes sense. Why do you look so suddenly happy about that? Oh, I was just thinking of how dependable you are. She must have a screw loose somewhere. But I keep from saying anything. I need to get back to the job at hand. I'll leave her bedroom and remove my bloodstained jacket before I head out. Time to go shop. Wait, what? Something in the kitchen catches my eyes ahead for the exit. Is that... food? Sitting on the table is a meal, or rather, a plate of food. Maybe a mishmash of ingredients would be more accurate. At the very least, I think it was something that was supposed to resemble food. Uh oh. <laughs> this must be why Arcoid was in the kitchen earlier. She says she normally doesn't eat anything. So I don't exactly need to guess who she was preparing all the, this food for. Oh, seriously. What does she think she's doing? Well, we're going to find out the next time, so. <laughs> but there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be it for today's episode. Man, we got to see the boy Vlav Archangel. Or Archangel, however you want to say it. Uh, which is pretty cool. 
I mean, it's kind of weird how you just stopped in the middle of the fight, but I guess they did kind of, uh, um, they kind of explained it that the sun was coming up. So also it's like, I think there, I, I, I don't know if they're forgetting one part of the story of uh, a certain family member and a pair of maids who he has to go visit. And it's been damn near almost two days since he's gone visiting or he went back to the mansion. So, <laughs> Uh, man, next time we see them, it's going to be an absolute massacre for Shiki. <laughs> but there we go. Like I said, it's going to be the end of today's video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If you did like, comment, and subscribe, it is your boy White Album. I will see you guys next time.